Hi, uh, I'm Jared Pitty with IGN, and today I'm joined by a special guest. Who are you, sir? My name is Steve Golson. And, and uh, Steve, what, did, what do you have to do with what's going on on the screen here? Well, I was one of the developers at General Computer Company in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, who developed uh, developed this game, Miss Pac-Man. So you made Miss Pac-Man along with some others. Yes, I did. No kidding. And uh, we're playing it here right now on uh, on the Steam version. And looking at it, Steve, you say this is uh, probably an emulated version of your code. Yes, I believe so. It it looks like it. I saw a couple a couple of little subtle things in the in the intro that made me think this is emulated. They've modified it though. Uh, the copyright notice is a little bit different and, and some things like that, but the gameplay looks looks to be uh, the original code. So, uh, Steve, every time we play this, do you make money? No. No? Unfortunately, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's too bad. No, no, no. We were paid. Uh, we, we earned royalties on a per-cabinet basis on the arcade machines, and then uh, subsequent to that, we earned royalties on... Uh, uh, basically, dollar volume of sales for things like like Xbox games and and cell phone versions and things like that. Now, uh, Steve, uh, you're not actually the one at the controls here, and neither am I. Who's steering for us? Uh, this is uh, my son Jacob Golson, who is much better at playing these games uh, than I am. Now, you mentioned uh, that that sometimes developers aren't actually the best at their own games. Before we started this interview, why why is that? Well, it was certainly true back then when 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 we were playing, and it's because you have this crutch of being able to crank the game up to whatever level you want to try out. So for a, a player in the arcade, if they want to say, oh, I want to see Ms. Pac-Man at level 10, uh, they'd have to play it all the way and have to get good at it to do it. But we have this crutch of having the development system emulator um, and we can say, oh, well, let's just set it up to make it level 10 and mm -hmm. give myself infinite lives, and I can just play up there without having to be terribly good at it. Maybe that's just, I'm just making excuses for myself, and I should not speak for all other developers, but that's I, the story I tell, and I'm sticking with it. I don't know. I'm not any good at, at video games uh, at all, So, I, although I do love Miss Pac-Man, and I'm, I'm almost proficient in it. Um, now, you mentioned uh, you mentioned emulators. So you built this game in 1981, right? Is that, is uh, that that's correct. correct. Yes. And uh, emulation then meant something a little different than it does now in, in this era of powerful computers and software emulators. Uh, what you guys used was a little different, right? Correct. Uh, it was called an, a microprocessor emulation system, but essentially it's an actual Z80 microprocessor surrounded by all sorts of magic hardware and then put on a, 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 a probe on a flexible cable that you would plug into your, uh, your system. It was for designing embedded systems, it w is what they were called back then. And I mentioned that kind of specialized hardware didn't come cheap? Uh, no, no, tens of thousands of dollars easily which for is a system like that. Which is amazing to think that now many people on the internet can simply on their home PC download a piece of software that accomplishes fundamentally it, the same task. Essentially, it's, it's essentially, if you're familiar with, with uh, uh, systems like MAME, it's like MAME, but it's actually built with hardware. Really, uh, really And cool. we could do the same things of single stepping and, and examining memory, and, and, uh, uh, but it was, a, uh, uh, it, it was the best way to do development of microprocessor systems at the time. Now, Miss Pac-Man is my favorite game in the Pac-Man series by, by a long shot. Why, I, thank you. I, I really love it. I, it's an absolute masterpiece. And this was a game that, when you began working on it, was not... Uh, it, the history of this is, is, is maybe uh, a little muddy for some folks. Uh, succinctly, uh, I, what can you tell us about your relationship with Namco and how all this came together uh, for Miss Pac-Man? So, this this started life as an enhancement kit. At this point in the industry, there were, um, if you were an arcade owner, then your arcade game would get great revenues. You would spend $2,500 for it, uh, and you put it in your arcade, and you'd get all the kids to drop lots of quarters in, and you'd make a lot of money. But then eventually, they would get to be really good at playing the game. The And... But there's nothing physically wrong with the cabinet. It's mm -hmm. just the software. The, the players have learned to beat the game. Right. So there were these what were called speed-up kits or enhancement kits that were sold in the industry. And they would, you'd, for a few hundred dollars, uh, you would buy one if you're an arcade owner. And you'd plug it into your cabinet and it would make the game run faster or be a little bit harder. 
And that was how General Computer started, was to have kits like that. And the first kit we did was for Atari Missile Command. Okay. And then uh, our second kit was for Pac-Man, and it was uh, called Crazy Auto. But we eventually, uh, making the long story very short, we, initi- we eventually talked to Midway, who were the, uh, the people who produced Pac-Man in the United States, and we said, hey, we have this kit. And they said, oh, well, well, we'll buy it from you, and we'll use it to bring out an entirely new game. Oh, it looks like, uh, lo- uh, looks like uh, J- Jacob, you got eaten there the first time around. We'll jump right back in, if that's okay, and keep on going here. No, it's uh, pretty good. He got up to the uh, yeah, Apple, did, the Apple quite rack. Well. Pretty good. Especially with keyboard controls, which yes. is, a, is a hard way to play this game. So yeah. you got permission from Namco. Uh, now, I've heard the story many well, different... Well, from Midway. Or from Midway. Yes. I say Namco. I apologize. Yeah, I've heard the story uh, a, a lot of different uh, ways. Thank you so much for clarifying it. You guys actually did end up officially licensing this through them or working in conjunction with them? How did it work? With Midway, yes. With Midway. So we we, uh, uh, we, we signed a, a, a licensing agreement with Midway yeah. for this game called Crazy Auto. Okay. And uh, uh, that they would produce it either in kit form like we initially intended yeah. and selling it to arcade owners who owned a Pac-Man cabinet. Okay. But also in the contract, it said, oh, if we bring this out as a new game, as a complete cabinet, uh, then you'll also get paid for that. And that's really what, turns out, that's really what Midway wanted to do because Mm -hmm. their Pac-Man production had just ended at the end of 1981, and they were looking to keep their factory full. And they had had nothing new coming from Namco that they could build. And along came a markedly superior sequel to Pac-Man, made by you guys in the form of Crazy Auto. Now, if I want to play Crazy Auto now, uh, yes. where can I go to do that, Steve? Uh, unfortunately, nowhere. <laughs> they're, okay. They're, um, so, so, due to the variety of, of, of legal issues, who owns what intellectual property is a... Uh, uh, a, 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 a difficult thing to explain. But basically... The, the rights to this um, is, is, is all for Namco's benefit. And so it, we cannot turn around and say, oh, well, here's Crazy Auto, here's the ROMs, you can play it. Mm-hmm. Uh, occasionally, um, we will bring one out at uh, uh, various uh, uh, game conferences for, for people to play, but it's sort of a one-off thing. How many dedicated Crazy Auto machines remain, remain functional in the world? Uh, just one. Just one. Yeah, and in uh, my basement. In your basement, but, okay. But the, the, the software is, is safely archived away, so uh, oh, please, good. please don't worry. So it's protected. That's yes, nice. That's, that's good right. to know. There have been a few people who have made their own Crazy Auto um, uh, mimic games, if you will, by starting with Pac-Man and, oh, well, let's just modify the character set. Uh, and so it, it appears to be Crazy Auto, but it's you know, not exactly... The, the real thing. There are some the subtle nuances that are different there? Well, it, not so much because the gameplay for Crazy Auto is essentially identical to Ms. Pac-Man. Okay. So it's it's really just um, uh, cosmetic. There, there, I think there are a few gameplay differences because when, when we stopped developing Crazy Auto toward uh, November of 1981, there were certainly a few changes that were made to the code after that. And so if I go back and recover Crazy Auto code, there, there are a couple of changes that were made to make it Ms. Pac-Man that are not in Crazy Auto. Um, but essentially, the, the gameplay is the same. But so, so if you take Ms. Pac-Man and you hack it to change the characters, it's essentially the same play as Crazy Auto. Now, what about, uh, you mentioned that this started life as a blue color enhancement board. So yes. uh, because you started that process uh, uh, earlier on, before you had your relationship with Midway, um, you didn't have access to the Pac-Man source code when you did that directly, right? You actually had to figure out a way to, to, to reverse engineer that? Yes, exactly. So, and, and that's exactly the right word to use. Reverse engineer, we had the schematics, mm-hmm. we had... The, uh, the code that we could dump out of the Pac-Man cabinet, and uh, it's 16K bytes worth, and it prints out to be about 180 pages of disassembled code, but this is just raw disassembly with no, no comments and no, uh, um, no nothing. You had to understand it yourself. So first you got the code, and then you had to figure out what it did, which is absolutely yes. fascinating. Yes, I, correct. I, and I, how long did that take you? 
We started the Crazy Auto Project in mid-June of 1981, and it was uh, essentially complete by uh, early October. Now, Steve, a question I've wanted to ask uh, and, and haven't yet since yesterday. So it, this game itself began life as an enhancement board. And then I uh, I have played two main versions of Miss Pac-Man in my life. One is the one that we're playing right here, right now, emulated. But there's also a much faster version that's very popular in hardware. And I hear people refer to that as the speed-up chip version. Yes. Well, can you tell me about that? Uh, there's one byte that you change. Okay. It takes one byte to change it. And that is the, essentially, it's the, this is the speed that Ms. Pac-Man moves in the maze. Okay. And if you change that, well, it moves a different speed. And that's changed through a hardware modification? Uh, hardware. Well, it's, oh, let's watch the, uh, oh, yeah, watch let's watch the, the, cut, the scene. cut scene here. Anything to tell us about what's going on? Yes, here? the music was written by Chris Rode, and uh, the animation was done by Mike Horowitz. So... Um, I had little to do with this, but now, I can enjoy it. And this was originally auto and uh, female auto, right? Correct. Uh, going back and forth. Correct. And the auto was a character that, if you look at the side of a Pac-Man cabinet and look at the artwork on it, that's kind of what auto looked like. It was, imagine a Pac-Man, but he's got legs and he's got blue eyes and he struts around the maze in sort of a 3D fashion of how he... Uh, oh, that was the collision bug that you you did not collide. So. Oh yeah, there's a bug. Uh, yes, there's this. It's it's well known in in Pac-Man. Uh, there's a a certain way where the Pac-Man and a monster can pass through each other, mm -hmm. and it has to do with the way the collision routine is written. Uh, and we left that alone in Ms. Pac-Man because it's to the benefit of the. Of the player. Okay. And so we did not want to take that out. So going back to that uh, speed up process, what do right. you have to change to make? You said it's one, so, one bit. So you, you, have change, to change. you change one byte or in, one the, byte in the code. And so if you have your own Pac Man cabinet, if you plug in new ROMs that have ah. that one byte changed, uh, and, and there are, um, uh, I, I've seen multi game versions that allow you to select whether you want to go fast or not, and all they're doing is. Um, Sometimes dynamically, perhaps modifying that one byte. Okay. Is that uh, was that an official enhancement you guys did, oh, no. or did somebody? Okay, so someone did that on top of your work. Correct. So, interesting. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, what'd you think when you first saw that out in the wild? Um, well, that was interesting. You know, I'm I'm sort of a purist. I was like, oh, you ought to play the game the way it is. But it is very compelling. It makes it, I think, less of a strategy game and more of like a twitch game. Yeah. Uh, so it change makes it a different game. But if you enjoy it, that's fine. Neat. Yeah. Uh, so. Of all the Pac-Man games, which one do you enjoy playing the best? Oh, I I'd have to say Ms. Pac-Man. Yeah. I I don't play as much as I probably should. Oh, but okay. We we now have a a Junior Pac-Man game uh, in in our basement. Uh, we were trying to keep track of how many games we have, uh, a dozen or so, uh, arcade games. And uh, so I should play more Junior Pac-Man now that we have one. Mm -hmm. But but Ms. Pac-Man is my favorite. It's uh, it's it's uh, also my favorite. Something I really enjoy. I'm so happy to have you in here today. Uh, we're also uh, we're doing some uh, written work, a uh, uh, more extensive interview uh, with this gentleman to talk more about uh, what's going on with Pac-Man, along with some photographs of some really cool historical relics that I hope you guys will check out on IGN. Thank you so much for coming, Steve. Well, you're very welcome. It's been my pleasure. Uh, Jacob doesn't have a mic on, but thank you so much for playing, Jacob. He's nodding. And uh, for everything, Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Pac-Man Junior, Baby Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus, at all, etc., stay with your friends here at IGN.